Hey, good morning. It's morning where I am. I don't know if it's morning where you are or not, um, but here we are for day four, week one. Our focus this week is hope. Can you see that there? So we lit the first Advent candle on Sunday, right? And we're focusing on hope this week. So if you'll grab your Bibles, our scripture passage today is Matthew chapter 1. Matthew's the first book in the New Testament. So go ahead and turn there. Matthew chapter 1, and we're going to look at verses 18 to 21. So Matthew chapter 1, big number 1, right? Teeny tiny number 18. It's titled The Nativity of Christ. Christ. So I'm going to give you a minute to get there, and then we're going to pray before we get started. Pray with me. Father God, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you for technology that allows us to come together all around the world to be in your word as we celebrate Advent, as we, as we celebrate the birth of Jesus, and as we look forward for the return of Jesus again. And so, Lord, just be with us today. As we look into your word, may our hearts and minds be open to receive your word today, God. And may you be glorified that all that we do in this chapter time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so verse 18 through 21. Read along with me. The birth of Jesus Christ came about this way. After his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered before they came together that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So you see, Joseph cared for Mary, because we read here that they were already engaged, and then she's going to have a baby. Well, it's not his baby, because they're not married yet. And so he's like, um, maybe I'll just divorce her secretly, because I don't want to cause embarrassment to her, or, well, to him either. But then... God sent an angel. And that angel said, Oh, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. What has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Mm. From the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. Because, there's that word, because, because, there's a reason, right? He will save his people from their sins. Praise God. Praise God that he sent Jesus to save us from our sins because we certainly needed a Savior. We can't save ourselves. We need a Savior. All right, so here in our devotion today from the Daily Grace Company, Jesus has come. This is our Advent lesson that we're doing. Today's focus is hope in the birth of Jesus. And it says here in our devotion, every baby is special. Have you ever been around a newborn baby? They just smell so good and they're just so sweet and so cuddly. Every single baby is special. Each one is born with, with different features, right? And different personalities because God makes us all unique. Now, maybe, maybe you were born with dark curly hair or Maybe you were one of those little ball babies that didn't have any hair at all. Maybe you had freckles and a sweet little button nose. Or maybe you had extra big space between your toes. I love baby toes. It's one of my favorite parts of a baby is those sweet little baby toes. And, and you know, I think about how our toes and our feet all look different. My sweet friends, in, um, my sweet Burmese friends in Myanmar and Thailand, their feet look different than ours, and they have these sweet little baby toes on those children. God makes us all the same but different because we are 
beautifully and wonderfully made, fearfully and wonderfully made, all made special. Those are the things that make you, you, right? Well, Jesus was the most special baby of all. We did not know the color of his hair or if he was tall or if he was small. But what we do know is he was special because he is the only baby ever, ever, who was also God. There is no other baby that's born that was God also. Only baby Jesus. He was not just um, a nice man and a wise teacher. He was called Emmanuel, which means God with us. He was so much more than just a special little baby. He was baby and God at the same time. We cannot see God, and sometimes it's hard to hear his voice. Thankfully, Jesus is God, and he was born with people on earth. He was born to be with people on earth. People saw what Jesus did as he grew up and, and grew into a man. They saw the things that he did. And they heard the things that he said. Through Jesus, they saw who God is and what God is like. And they wrote down many stories about Jesus, which are recorded today in the Bible. Aren't you so thankful that, that God sent his one and only son, Jesus, to be born so that he could live on the earth and we could know more about what God is like? Jesus' birth was all about hope. He was the hope of all the world that the world had been waiting for. And they had waited a long time for Jesus. The day he was born, the waiting was over. Hope had come. Now remember the definition of hope, right? Believing that something better is coming. Right? Remember that definition? Well, hope had come to the earth. He was right there laying in a manger. And Jesus would live his whole life to show people God was good and that God is faithful and that God is true and that it was good to hope in him. Hope in God. Our hope, our believing that something better is coming, Jesus is coming again. Heaven is waiting for us when God decides it's time for us to all live together eternally. But until then, we wait. We, we're in Advent, right? We wait for that hope that is coming again. Jesus would live his whole life to show people God was good and faithful and true. So I want to ask you today, here's our questions for our devotion. What makes Jesus different from any other baby ever born? Well, what did we just say? He was Jesus and God. He was God in the flesh. Emmanuel is one of Jesus' names, and it means God with us. What do you think it means that Jesus is God with us? Well, he was Jesus, the flesh, the one and only Son of God. God in the flesh came down to earth so that we could know how to live. So here are some prayer focuses for you and your family today. Ask God to help you understand the messages about God that Jesus came to bring. Do you understand what the Bible says? And if you don't, I want you to find somebody that can help you. Dig deeper. Look at the original meaning. Find out what God is saying to you. And then how about sit and read and listen to what God is saying to you. Thank God for fulfilling his promise and sending Jesus to be your hope. Your hope. My hope. Knowing and believing that something better is ahead of us. Yeah. See, we live in this world that's broken and full of sin. But we have hope because heaven is waiting. Jesus is preparing a home for us in heaven. And in heaven, there's none of, none of this sin that we deal with every day. No trials, no burdens, no, no dying, no leaving, no sickness, no sadness. Oh, perfect. So we wait with hope of better things coming. But while we wait, does that mean that we can't celebrate here on earth? Well, no. No, because see, Jesus came to earth. 
and, and, and I was just talking to a friend on the phone, and we were talking about the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We don't, we don't get to sit idle. No, we need to be honoring him while we're here on earth in all the brokenness so that other people can know about this hope that we find in Jesus. So see, we have work to do while we're here waiting for hope that is coming, that, that eternal life in heaven. Oh, guys, we need to make sure everybody knows. And that's why I gave you that challenge earlier this week to think of someone right now who either doesn't know Jesus or doesn't have a place to worship and a place to celebrate the birth of Jesus and invite them to come be with you. But before you invite them to come be with you to celebrate Christmas, sweet December, pray for them every single day. Pray for them every single day that they would come to know the true meaning of Christmas, the true meaning of sweet December, the true meaning of, of hope that we have in Jesus and that they will seek him and find him and give their life to him and accept what he did for them on the cross so that they can have hope. So I hope you're thinking of that person. I hope you've already started praying for that person. If you haven't, today's the day. Start praying for that person. And then invite them to celebrate Jesus, the real meaning of Christmas. All right, guys, let's go reach out, build up, and share the good news. Let's, let's go be united in the passionate pursuit of the next generation. Oh, there's so many people out there that need to know Jesus. All right, I'll see you tomorrow for day five of our Advent. I love you guys. Bye.